Lifelong learning is so much more than sitting in a class. Join us today and learn how learning after 60 can help your brain, your health, your happiness, and your social life. Hello and welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Dr. Kathy Rowe, Executive Director of New Jersey Advocates for Aging Well. And today we're off-site at the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Rutgers University. This beautiful building was renovated and reopened in 2019. So we're here today to learn more about what goes on at Ollie at Rutgers and meet the people who make it happen. So we have today Megan Novak, the director here at Ollie at Rutgers and the program coordinators, Kristen Michaels and Regina Kerrion. Thank you and thank you for having us here today. Thank you for being here. So Megan, can you tell us about Ollie at Rutgers and how it came to be? Sure. So we started as a lifelong learning program in 1993. We were then named RUAL or the Rutgers Academy for Lifelong Learning. And then in 2005, we received our first endowment from the OSHA Foundation. Not OSHA, but OSHA. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and then our name changed accordingly. Mm -hmm. And in 2007, we received our second endowment mm -hmm. from the Osher Foundation. And that's when our population really exploded. Um, so right now we are hovering around 1,600 members or so. Um, so we have a small staff for a very large program. Okay. So tell us, what is the Osher Foundation and what is their connection to lifelong learning? Sure. The Osher Foundation is a philanthropic foundation that was started by Bernard Osher and his wife, Barbro. And it began um, in 1977 mm -hmm. with um, particular focus on the arts, on um, integrative medicine, and mm -hmm. on lifelong learning. And they provide scholarships for um, undergraduates with a particular focus on those individuals returning to study. Okay. And, um, and then Bernard Osher, who's the head of the foundation, um, came to this realization that the key to a meaningful and long life mm -hmm. is really curiosity. Okay. and satisfying one's curiosity and to being a lifelong learner. And then he started these institutes. They began in California. Mm -hmm. um, he's based in San Francisco. And then they spread throughout the country. So there's at least one in every state throughout oh, the wow. country. Okay. Yeah, there's currently 125. And New Jersey, it's here at Rutgers. New Jersey is here at Rutgers, yes, proudly. And is this the only site? No, so we have locations um, here in New Brunswick, mm -hmm. also in Freehold at Brookdale Community College, and also on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're very proud about that. Good. So let me ask um, Kristen and Regini, so what do you think the, the benefits are of lifelong learning? What is it and why is it important for older adults? Well, I think for older adults, um, you know, continuing to socialize, right, also stimulating their brain health. Uh, it's very important. Um, you know, those are the two main. We really created a community here. Actually, we didn't. The students created a community mm -hmm. here. And we have heard from many of them, especially during COVID, how just being together on Zoom was so important to have that connection. Mm -hmm. So not only is it about learning, which is critical to keeping, you know, keeping the mind interested and, and keeping excited about learning, but it's also friendships mm -hmm. and the social aspect and mm -hmm. the community aspect. And so we really, even if it was on Zoom, they were happy to be together and well, happy to see other people. So let's talk about COVID because you opened the, reopened this beautiful building 2019 and then everything closed down. Mm -hmm. So how did the students adapt? How did you adapt? Did you ever think you would be, you know, <laughs> they're laughing. Did you ever think you would be running school on Zoom? I mean, most people didn't hear of it before COVID. So what? How did you do it? Yeah, so we knew that at some point we would be online, mm -hmm. we would be on Zoom. We did not think that it would be within the span of two weeks, um, you know, that we would 
be uh, leaving our offices and um, thinking, you know, well, we'll be back in a week or so. Right. And then suddenly everything changed. Mm -hmm. our, our worlds were turned upside down mm -hmm. overnight. Um, and Kristen and Regini worked tirelessly to get us online. I mean, these women trained instructors, trained our students, created courses on, you know, on Zoom. Um, at, well, we were initially on a different platform, which was even more laborious. Mm -hmm. um, and then we switched over to Zoom. But the point being that I never thought that we would do it so fast. Okay. So, you know, we would be hit with something so quickly and that our population would respond so positively. Oh, great. So how many people do you think stayed on with you? Was it most of your students, half your students? Well, we know from surveys that we have more than half of our students who have stayed with us. Mm -hmm. And we've also gained an additional 800 students wow. who are just with us because of Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we know that from surveying our population. Great. Yeah. We have students from other countries. We have students from out of state. So we are very, and our instructors are mm -hmm. thrilled. Yes. Mm -hmm. And some of them are even afraid to come back in person because they don't want to lose right. those students that they gained okay. who are not local. Okay. So we're, we're working on figuring something out about that. But right. you know, to have international students, we have international instructors. Right. We oh, have wow. an instructor who is from, in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, while it's been challenging, mm -hmm. <laughs> there are many benefits. And, and now students from other states can take courses with us. Mm -hmm. So one of the small like golden nuggets yeah. coming out of COVID, more <laughs> yeah. students. That's great to hear. And then, but when people are taking classes, it's not the same as sitting in a college class, you know, with a professor in the exams. It's not like that. How is this different? Well, this is very intentional, right? Um, folks uh, seek out um, our courses, um, looking to come in and learn with certain instructors. Mm -hmm. There's no, um, there's no tests, right? No pressure, no grades. Whereas, okay. you know, sitting in. Um, auditing a university course uh, would be otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. and it's not that these are any less stringent. Some of our courses are quite stringent. Some of them even have homework, not quite as intense, no papers or anything mm -hmm. like that. But the it's a, it's a very different environment to be among your peers and taught by a peer mm -hmm. than it is to be in an undergraduate class mm -hmm. um, with, with younger students and, and taught differently. Okay. And you said something, I think you both said it, intentional learning. Mm -hmm. So an intentional community. So it's not because you have to take it. It's because people really want to take these classes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So about how many different courses do you offer at any term? So it ranges from, you know, we have a shorter term that's five weeks and, and in those we'll offer maybe 50 or so. And then in our longer sessions that are 10 weeks, we can get up to 70 to 90 mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. courses oh, wow. that we offer. And they range from, you know, yoga and art to politics to history. Opera. Uh, opera. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's generally something for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if you can't find what you are interested in, we'd love to talk to you. Maybe if you could be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Because our teachers are part of our community. They are the mm -hmm. community. A lot of them came to us as students first. Mm -hmm and then you know realize that they wanted to to teach and they mm -hmm. have a passion and, a, and an experience and so we we love that mm -hmm. so people are living longer than ever before and they've had different experiences especially women because more women were more likely to work outside the home mm -hmm. um, or work for a paycheck than did before mm -hmm. and they've traveled more they've had different experiences so how is this translating into a, a quest for lifelong learning i think we have more sophisticated students mm -hmm. okay we have much more engaged students as you said because they are intentional they're seeking it out mm -hmm. but they are also more sophisticated many of them have traveled many of them right. have had experiences mm -hmm. so they bring a lot of that to the table and instructors that we have found we have some instructors who teach high school students mm -hmm. um, who also teach teach for us they love our students because they are excited to be there. Mm -hmm. They're inter interested yeah. in this topic and they bring their own perspectives. Most of our classes have discussions mm -hmm. and they bring a perspective that is not, that is unique. Mm -hmm. A life perspective. A life mm -hmm. perspective, exactly. And mm -hmm. that's 
really helps. We've some of our instructors just they said uh, the discussion portion they learn as much from that as they do when they teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's one of the pleasures I think of teaching for us. Um, yeah, is having I, that aspect. I think it's that collective wisdom in the classroom that you see that um, really sets us apart from other programming mm -hmm. that you might see for older adults. I mean, and when we say older adults, I mean, there's such a spectrum of ages. Mm -hmm. um, boomers are changing the landscape right. of right. lifelong learning as we speak, and we're trying to keep up with it. <laughs> um, you know, they're just as they're changing the yeah. landscape of everything. Right, right. Um, you know, we know that by 2030, more than half of our population will be 65 and older. So we need more staff. <laughs> um, you know, so if anyone other is walking yeah. and would like to teach a class, and would like to teach, right? please, please reach out to Megan. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> but do you actually have a minimum age for students? 50. 50, okay. Yeah, so a baby, really. Right, you right. Know? <laughs> yeah. We, and we're, we're starting, we're experimenting with having a class. So our classes are mostly during the week mm -hmm. and they are mostly during the day when folks who maybe haven't retired yet are not able to take part. Mm -hmm. So we're experimenting now, we'll have a Saturday class this fall, mm -hmm. a Saturday yoga class. So we'll see how that goes to, we would love some folks who aren't retired yet mm -hmm. to join us and to be able to partake. Okay. Now, Regini, as a seasoned program coordinator, what have been some of your favorite classes or events or activities here? So um, I would say actually uh, one of the highlights have been the, our cheese courses. Um, mm -hmm. You know, during COVID, we had the uh, opportunity of meeting our instructor, Carla Grafer, and she's done uh, a number of cheese courses. Most recently, we were able to do that for the first time in person here in this very room, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, and it was, uh, it's, you know, classic cheeses and their ancient Roman influences. And uh, folks got to, you know, be together, learn, and also sample some of the cheeses along with a little bit of wine. And uh, Kristen, what would you tell people if they're considering joining Ali at Rutgers, otherwise known as Ali Roo, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Why should they do it? Give us a try. You have a passion. This is your time now that you can focus on what you're interested in. So take that time. We have, as we were discussing, we have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So give us a try. We have one day programs. That cheese tasting course is, was mm -hmm. a one day class. We have three weeks, five weeks. So if you're think you're interested, take it, give it a try. We do offer refunds after the first course mm -hmm. and even longer for others who may be members. So give it a try and see if you like it. You'll meet people who have similar interest, mm -hmm. make new friends hopefully, also learn something along the way and enjoy yourself and get to follow your passion. You know, most of us spend our lives working and it maybe isn't our passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. But now you've got time to invest in that passion. Mm -hmm. So go for it. If you've ever wanted to try drawing or art, try it. Mm -hmm. If you've ever wanted to, you know, learn about um, the Roman Empire, we've got a class on that. Mm -hmm. um, so now's the time to jump in and, and give it a shot. And I noticed the first time I was here that your parents are taking classes here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my parents, my dad actually works here. Um, he's 86 years old and he still works for us. And my mom, worked before I got here. They both were here before I got here. Mm. Um, and she's recently retired from Ali Roo and, and she now takes courses. Oh. So yeah, it's a little bit of a family affair. Um, but you know, my, my parents, I probably learned this from my parents, my parents are lifelong learners. Yeah. They read constantly mm -hmm. um, and they love learning. And they, they're just, they've traveled and they really, my mother is very pleased to now have time to take courses. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad just loves being busy during COVID. Mm -hmm. he, he helps us um, at the Freehold location and, and during COVID we were shut down and he couldn't do it. It, it was really uh, difficult for him, he missed it. Mm -hmm. He missed the interaction, he missed the social aspect, he missed having something to do um, specific every day. And so it's so glad that we can get him. We're, back here and mm -hmm. he actually has started to help us out online Good. as well so yeah so you can learn at any age he's was when he first got on a computer he was afraid to break it 
Um, <laughs> and now he's helped us on Zoom and helped us moderate and doing an, an amazing job. Mm -hmm. So just going back again to COVID, because a lot of the students that you gained under COVID are also students that couldn't have come here because they are too far away uh -huh. or because they don't drive or maybe they don't drive at night. So, you know, doing it online, what, what have people said about that? What, how, what was their experience and how are they reflecting or commenting on that time where online was the only option? Part of it is that they, we've heard mixed reactions. Mm -hmm. So some of our students who are even local Stay on, stay on. We want all your courses on Zoom. We love it so much. Oh, wow. And, but we've also got others who are tired of Zoom, who miss being in person mm -hmm. and want to have that interaction. So I mm -hmm. think we, we're doing our best to, to provide everything. You know, we have some classes on Zoom. Probably most of our classes are still on Zoom, mm -hmm. um, but we're bringing more back in person. And so as people feel comfortable coming back, mm -hmm. they'll come back. But even people who are local, we have found really like to not have to drive yeah. <laughs> and so you, they put up with it. They put so you up think you'll keep both going forward, both options? Absolutely. Yeah. So for people who want to learn more, who want to sign up for a class or see what you offer, where should they go? Visit our website, oliru.rutgers.edu. So that's O-L-L-I-R-U.rutgers.edu and visit our website, you'll find um, courses, you'll find the ability to register, you'll find our contact information, mm -hmm. you can call us directly and say hello, um, you'll find a general contact number, um, we love hearing from folks, we love questions, that's why we're here. Um, so, and you know, our registration period for our fall session is running throughout August. So, um, so come on, join us. And do you do, how is your semester set up? Is it a whole fall and then the spring or what's your calendar like? So we do fall and spring are our larger 10 weeks. So fall will start in September and it runs through November. And then we have a winter session in January that is a short five weeks. Mm -hmm. Then we go into a spring, which is a larger 10 weeks. And then we have summer, which is five. So we're, we're. You're year <laughs> round. Year round, yeah. <laughs> so can we go and do a tour of the building and see some of the classrooms we've been talking about? Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, let's do it. So this is the art room. It was designed specifically for our art classes in mind, as you'll see from the artwork on the walls. And the floors are concrete. So anything that gets on there gets easily wiped up. And we've got a sink for water purposes. So it's been great for our art classes. So this is our cinema classroom. We have many courses where students watch films and then discuss them together. So you'll see we've got the stadium seating, large movie screen, the sound is incredible in here. We also even have spots if people are in wheelchairs where they can um, have their wheelchairs here. It's a great room, students love it, instructors love it. We've got a podium. So it's just a wonderful room to watch. It's a wonderful room to watch movies in, wonderful room. So this is referred to our high tech classroom and it has state of the art monitors you'll see throughout the room so that wherever you're seated, you're able to see what's happening um, that the instructor is doing up front. Um, the shades are all automated so that you're able to get completely blackout uh, dark in here. So that's really wonderful. And you have these sound um, cages on the top of the uh, ceiling that help to really um, project sound throughout the room. So when instructors are projecting up in the front, it helps to carry sound back to the back of the room. So this is a standard classroom. It has a giant whiteboard, a projector, a computer, everything's connected. So an instructor just needs to bring their laptop or thumb drive. It's also nice and convertible. You'll see everything is on wheels. So we can really um, suit it to whatever the instructor needs. Um, if we're looking for a more discussion-based course, you can do a U or a circle. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be in a lecture size, uh, lecture setup. 
So now we'd like to meet some of the students here at Ali Roo, Sandy Bergelson and George Lesh. So Sandy, where are you from? Well, originally I'm from uh, Brooklyn, New York, but I've lived in New Jersey since 1963 uh, and involved with this program since 1997. And George? Um, I live in Edison. I've lived in Edison for almost 30 years and I retired last year and I recently got involved in the program, so I'm relatively new to the program. Sandy, you've been coming here a long time, so what are some of the programs that you've done? Well, uh, over that period of time, I've probably taken some, something in each of the areas. Uh, I almost always have at least one literature course. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, I have taken law, um, science, uh, history, politics, psychology, philosophy, theater, art appreciation, music appreciation, uh, wow. current events. Um, but it's a lot of courses that I've taken over so many years. What's been your favorite? You the literature. Literature? Absolutely. Were you a literature major or is that interesting when you were young? No, I wasn't actually. I was in technology. And so with my training, I had um, really not too many uh, courses in the humanities mm -hmm. and I missed them. I've always been an avid reader, mm -hmm. but I'm now reading a lot of the classics that I never did read before. Nice. And it's interesting having someone who is knowledgeable about literature uh, discussing the courses, uh, the books. What were some of your favorites, George? So I started a year ago, and so I've taken um, Irish history history classes, which is really interesting. I, I'm part um, Irish, so that's been really interesting. A great professor just talking about a lot of the history, um, really interesting. Um, I have a background in IT. I spent most of my career in information technology, and in college I didn't really take many um, courses, um, so, so um, non-IT courses, so mm -hmm. I took um, two courses, Intro to Philosophy mm -hmm. and Intro to Philosophy 2, which were completely different from what I've been doing for the past 30 some odd years. And they were really cool. It was very different. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, mm -hmm. um, but it was just interesting. The professor, the instructor was really good. Wow. So mm -hmm. it was fun. Yeah. And then a few other courses just dabbling, but I'm looking forward to this coming semester. There'll be, I think there's another Irish course. There's yes. some other courses. Yeah, there's <laughs> a few other courses that it should be really fun. Yeah. So it's interesting that both of you have an IT background and you're both back in the classroom. So what does it mean to you to be a lifelong learner? Well, once you are retired uh, or once if you have not had a career, if you were um, at home raising a family, once they're gone, uh, you have all of this time to spend uh, devoted to exploring all sorts of new areas. and. Uh, I just found that I was, well, I left my job in order to become involved with this program uh, because my husband was introduced to it uh, when it first started. I was still employed at Rutgers and I left my job to become involved because of his enthusiasm for it. And I've watched it grow, of course. Um, but I've just, uh, so many new areas have been opened up to me and of course developed a tremendous social life uh, before COVID. Uh, many, many new friendships, uh, which now continue. Uh, many new people. It's just been wonderful. It opened a whole world, uh, which I think is important. Uh, and uh, since I retired a year ago, um, I was concerned, what would I be doing? Mm -hmm. um, in information technology, you're constantly learning and relearning and, mm -hmm. you know, new things are happening, you have to keep up. So all that stops. And then the question is, well, what will I be doing? You know, will I just veg out, which wasn't an option for me. So I originally looked at taking possibly some four credit courses mm -hmm. and then I learned about the program. And I thought, well, let me try the program. Let me see what the program is like. And it's just been really good because there's people who are enthusiastic, as Sandy said, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you chat before the class, um, mm -hmm. the classes are casual, there's no tests or anything. So it's just really fun to learn and it's good to listen. Also, um, the instructors will sometimes reference books, so they'll reference mm -hmm. articles, mm -hmm. and you can go look at look them up. I mean, mm -hmm. with the Irish history, yeah. there are a couple points there where I thought, oh, I don't know much about that at all, or it was completely new. 
And then after class, um, I went and researched it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So as a new retiree, I wanted to learn how to spend my time, how to um, really keep up. So it was, this is one component of me doing that. And it's really been fun. It's really been good. I want to thank you both, and I hope you enjoy your classes this semester. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> so we're here with John, former student and now staff of Ali Roo. And John, can you tell us how long have you been involved and how did you get involved? Uh, I have been involved uh, on and off for probably close to 15 years or 20 years. Wow. I started taking classes uh, when it was just uh, Ruol. And uh, then I kind of uh, wandered <laughs> into uh, Ali Roo uh, in a um, minor capacity as a, an assistant to the coordinator at our facility uh, off campus in uh, Freehold. Okay. And I enjoyed it uh, as a chance to meet people every day uh, is a chance to uh, to help out. Uh, I was keeping busy. I was doing some computer work. I was helping uh, people with film equipment. Uh, just uh, overall, um, gopher and uh, trouble solver. And what do you what do you think the feelings are that people get coming here as students for lifelong learning? Uh, I think people. Uh, you never stop learning. If you stop learning, there's uh, you're, you're, you know, there's something wrong. Uh, these people want to learn. Mm -hmm. They want to keep learning. Uh, it keeps your mind going. Uh, it it keeps you uh, it keeps you alive. It gives you something to look forward to, and it enriches your life. These are all uh, classes that uh, are uh, something that uh, people don't know about. Mm -hmm. Uh, something they want to learn about. It's uh, people just uh, enjoy um, continuing the education process. And what do you think, what have been some of your favorite classes or what do you think are the favorite classes here that people sign up for? Oh gee, we have, uh, we have a lot of film classes. Really? Yes, uh, it's uh, a matter of uh, running it, doing question and answer, uh, analyzing, we have uh, history classes, uh, we have um, art. Uh, it's something for everyone. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, something that you want to do that you've never done before, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we have classes that can help you. And this, the classes here, it's not like going to sit in on a college class on the other side of Rutgers. No. It's not a, you know, a college class where you're getting credit. No, these are recreational classes. Uh, no tests, no exams. You, uh, you come in and enjoy yourself. Um, uh, it's something where you can have uh, a repartee with the instructor, uh, ask questions uh, if you don't understand it. Uh, and it's, it's uh, as I say, it's casual, it's recreational. Uh, there's no stress. Okay. Uh, the only stress is if the weather's not good. <laughs> So all the benefits of, of going to college without the stress. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to thank Kristen, Regina, and Megan for bringing us here today and showing us this great facility they have at Ali Roo. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights, brought to you by the Wallerstein Foundation for Geriatric Life Improvement. To find out more information and to view previous episodes, please visit our website at njaaw.org and click on Aging Insights, now also a podcast. I want to thank our partners here at PCTV for helping us bring our guests to you today. If you need information or resources about services in your area, please contact your county office on aging. Their phone number can be found on our website, or you can call the state hotline at 877-222-3737. We also invite you to look at our website for services and resources dedicated to helping older adults. Thank you, and be sure to tune in next time.